I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell change is you're going to have a task. Grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to have a nice So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. going on today um so i think where did we leave off we left off talking about reinforcers um it's kind of funny you saw me reinforcing the dogs there a little bit when they decided to come in um that's not the kind of reinforcement we're going to talk about today i think i think the important stuff that we need to talk about today is uh, uh what do you call it? unconditioned or unconditional reinforcers you can you refer to them as unconditioned i suppose that's probably that's probably where every book's going to refer to him as. I suppose Pavlov might have been annoyed, but Pavlov and reinforcement don't necessarily go together, right? <laughs> well, they will at the end of this lecture. Watch. Um, so anyway, uh, reinforcers, unconditioned ones, uh, primary reinforcers, I suppose, would be the, a, a better way to think of it. So we've got a handful of primary reinforcers that are available. Now, we need to understand what a primary reinforcer is first. Okay, so uh, we've got a couple of things we need to think about. So reinforcers by definition, increase the probability of behavior, right? So uh, when, when done contingently, when applied contingently, the reinforcer then increases the probability of the behavior happening in the future. There are unbelievable amounts of different types of reinforcers, right? So there's everything that you can imagine as a reinforcer. I mean, I, I suppose this pumpkin could be a reinforcer, kind of weird, kind of big, but whatever, maybe it is a reinforcer, who knows? Anyway, you, you develop reinforcers um, through pairing, right? Through a classical conditioning process. So you take a uh, some stimulus that may or may not be reinforcing, or, or have, sorry, that obviously isn't reinforcing. So you take a stimulus, you pair it with a known reinforcer, a, a primary reinforcer, maybe such as such as water. Um, hold on, let me get the tea here. So um, anyway, so we take those reinforcers and we pair them with other known reinforcers or primary reinforcers uh, in order to produce our um, anyway produce your reinforcing effects. That's how you get a lot of reinforcers. Anyway, I, I'm like, I'm way ahead of myself. So the first thing we need to know about is what are the primary reinforcers? Well, there's a handful. Um, first one here is not tea. <laughs> no, that's a learned one. Some people hate tea. You know, you get it done. So anyway, bad joke. So no water, right? Definitely a primary reinforcer. And I, I think what you're going to notice without the, throughout the world, the primary reinforcer, hold on, I need a, I need a tea bag. Green tea works. Green tea bags. <laughs> Reminds me of a joke. Um, anyway, not a good one either. So, it, uh, I, swear I get in trouble if I don't throw that away. So, anyway, green. primary reinforcers. We got water, right? Um, we got a handful of them. Food, I'll get to that here in a minute. I'm dipping my tea bag for, 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 for appropriately. Anyway, um, so we got tea, well, so water. Food is a reinforcer. Hold on, which reminds me I'm hungry. So, uh, it's getting me a, what you call it, artichoke. I love artichokes, don't, don't tease me. So, uh, anyway, so we got food as a reinforcer, that's a primary reinforcer. Water is a primary reinforcer. There's a handful of other things that are primary reinforcers too. Anybody want to guess what they are? You don't really have to guess, I suppose. Uh, you could just figure out the ones that are related to, um, in a sense, survival of the species, right? So if the species needs to survive, there's certain stimuli that are going to keep you going, right? So water, obvious, right? That's a primary reinforcer. So in other words, the human species will work towards it. You know, it's really funny, folks. I was actually going to eat this thing, but it is totally rotten. That's not going to be a reinforcer. Ugh. I guess I haven't been eating enough fruits and veggies anyway. Wow. Um, beep, whatever. So food keeps you alive. Water keeps you alive. Guess Sex keeps you alive. Uh, kind of keeps the species going, right? Um, then you've got another one that's warmth, right? So that's, those are really common ones. So, uh, oh, it's a little bit better. Hang on here. So, uh, we need, uh, almost forgot. Whoa, that's not a student. I see that. So, 
primary reinforcers. Back to the issue at hand here. Food, water, sex, and sometimes warmth. Yes, I like a lot of sugar. Maybe it is a primary reinforcer too. I don't know. So do the experiments. Find out. So, um, and as as a result of the primary reinforcers, you can then pretty much strengthen any behavior you want, right? So it doesn't matter what the behavior is. Um, primary reinforcers, when delivered, oh my god, <laughs> it's kind of squirting all over the place. That happens. Uh, so when delivered. Contingently, you will increase the probability of a behavior. Now, primary reinforcers by themselves are kind of hard to always work with, right? What happens if you get a kiddo satiated? Maybe they're they're full. They're not working for food anymore. Uh, maybe they're not thirsty. You, you, you pump them full of stuff, liquid, right? And um, so, as a result, you don't have to just use primary reinforcers. You can pair using classical conditioning. You can pair any stimulus within reason with a primary reinforcer repeatedly using a traditional classical conditioning procedure to develop new reinforcers. Um, I've done all sorts of things as reinforcers. With I've worked with some fish in the past and I used colored sticky notes, like stick, the, the sticky notes, I'm not, I, can't, I don't think I can legally say the name of them, but anyway, I used to color those to reinforce particular behavior for a fish, right? A sticky note is not a natural reinforcer for a fish. It's just a, it's just a reinforcement, it's just it's a stimulus. Until paired with food repeatedly, by pairing that sticky note, what I did would be like, I'd do this, right? So sticky note, food. And how do you feed a fish, right? You just drop some food in. So sticky note, food, sticky note, food. I did this for weeks on end. And eventually I found out that when the fish does what you wanted it to do, you could just flash a sticky note in front of the tank. And the probability of that fish doing that particular behavior increased in the future. So there's an example of developing a conditioned reinforcer. So an unconditioned reinforcer, to recap here, is the ones that you don't need to learn anything about. They're naturally reinforcing for the species as a whole. They strengthen behavior that, have, that, that leads to those things, right? So contingent. Um, and then you can pair those unconditioned reinforcers with other stimuli to develop conditioned reinforcers or conditional reinforcers. So anyway, um, hope you're enjoying your day. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out here and go get some other work done. And I'm going to enjoy my tea. And uh, I think that in general, um, oh Christ, folks, just want to point out to you that the cabinet door is open. I have a major, major problem with shutting cabinet doors. My wife loves to remind me all the time that I, I don't shut them. And she attempts to reinforce me. Um, she even uses primary reinforcers when the kitchen's all clean. <laughs> lucky you. Uh, I mean, lucky me. Ha! Anyway, um, that was probably TMI, but hopefully, uh, may maybe she needs to deliver some more primary reinforcers for me keeping the doors closed, uh, because obviously I leave them open too much. So whatever punisher she's been trying to use to, to, for me on these things, uh, it doesn't work. So again, that's probably another point which we'll get back into that I want you to remember very quickly since we're on the topic of reinforcement is that if you're trying to strengthen a behavior and you're delivering a reinforcer contingency and that behavior isn't changing, you've got a couple of issues you need to worry about. Number one, is that reinforcer actually a reinforcer? It might not be. Number two, you might have a motivating operation issue that might be satiated. They might not be thirsty, right? They might be, oh, I should probably show you that sign because that's just cool. <laughs> um, anyway, so it might be, they might not be, they might be thirsty. They might not be thirsty because they've just completely drank a gallon of water. They might not be hungry because they just ate a bunch of food. So uh, those are the motivating operation pieces. So, but keep in mind that it's often that what you think is a reinforcer might not actually be. So anyway, I'm out here. I'm going to go play with the dogs and do some other work. Have a good day.